in this section, we are going to talk about a very important concept, uh, namely uncertainty analysis. The idea behind this is that when we use any kind of model, we have been assigning a numerical value to each parameter that is used in the model. Um, and then we come up, we use the model and come up with an answer. So for example, if we used uh, the well-mixed room model, we can assign a value to the generation rate G and the ventilation rate Q, and we'll come up with a concentration, which is G divided by Q. So we can assess the value of the concentration. However, what if we don't exactly know the value of the uh, G and Q parameters? How does that affect our knowledge of the concentration? And so that's what we're going to explore in this section. But before we get into the analysis of uncertainty, we're going to take a few minutes to discuss probability and what we really mean by probability. The classical or frequentist view of probability is the one that we are most familiar with, and we have encountered it in various uh, statistics courses that we may, we may have taken. And this is that the probability of an event occurring in a particular trial is the frequency with which it occurs in a long series of similar trials. Um, so the frequency of uh, heads when you're uh, tossing a coin is 50% because if you toss a coin 10,000 times, then roughly 5,000 times you'll get heads. We can extend it to uh, if you weigh a filter that you have captured particles on from air sampling and you do uh, repeated weighings of the same filter, then you will get particular probability of the weight of that filter. Or if we repeat measurements of the air concentration of a pollutant in a steady state concentration, then we are going to get uh, the probability of the concentration. And these can be represented by a distribution. So if we repeated uh, weighings of a filter again and again, in this particular example, uh, the most frequent value we observe in weighing the filter again and again is three uh, milligrams. But there is a range of values observed all the way from around 2.1 to up to 3.9. And uh, so this is uh, the probability of uh, the distribution of weights of the filter. And the idea here is that this is out there in nature, and we are just going and measuring it. So we have gone and measured the probability of heads occurring in coin tosses, or we've observed the probability of the weight gain of a filter by going and measuring it. In contrast, there is a personalist or Bayesian view of probability. And here it's not very clear what the relevant population of trials should be. So the example I like to give is that of betting uh, on a horse in a horse race. There is no population of horse races that are exactly identical. And so if you wanted to bet on a particular horse, A, you are essentially going with your gut uh, feeling about this particular horse. There is nothing you can go out and measure to tell you what the probability of this horse's uh, winning is. Uh, and in fact, if you bet on horse A, uh, the person next to you might bet on horse B with an equal level of confidence and uh, feasibility. So here, the probability is essentially a description of your state of knowledge or your state of mind. Uh, in the context of industrial hygiene, we can extend it to say, okay, uh, can we estimate the airflow rate through a room in the absence of any measurements? And uh, an expert industrial hygienist uh, can estimate it to being between five and nine air changes per hour, with each value being equally likely. But there is no population of airflow measurements, just like there is no population of horse races that we can use to bet on a particular horse. And so this is a subjective description of the state of information or knowledge of the expert. 
uh, just like in the horse race scenario, two different people might have different assessments of which horse might win. There is uh, a similar situation here. Two experts might arrive at different estimates of what the uh, air changes per hour is through a room. But this doesn't mean that uh, this personalist or Bayesian view is any less valid than the classical view. Both of them provide descriptions of probability that follow the laws of probability. In fact, the whole field of probability arose from the personalist view, and it's only later that it became the classical view began to dominate until more recent years when the Bayesian approach has become uh, more popular. Now let's look at the different sources of uncertainty when we are trying to model any uh, particular scenario. So number one, which has two parts, A and B, are the types of uh, uncertainty and variability we have uh, all studied in statistics courses. So 1A is random error and statistical variation. And uh, this is most studied and best understood and it arises from random errors in direct measurement of some quantity. For example, the repeat measurements of a blank filter can determine the error associated with gravimetry. We have all studied how to statistically handle these kinds of uncertainties. They are uh, distributed according to a normal distribution, and we know all about the uh, mathematics behind it. 1B is variability. So this is not so much error, but it is just the natural variability of some parameter over time and space, and it can also be represented by a probability distribution. Uh, and we have studied in this course the exposure of a worker category uh, that can vary from day to day or worker to worker, can change seasonally, and uh, we have discussed the fact that a log normal probability distribution uh, can describe such variability uh, of worker exposures. So again, these are statistically easy to handle. Uh, number two is a different kind of uncertainty, and this is when we have incomplete scientific or technical knowledge about, about a given parameter. We don't know what we don't know. So 1A and 1B type of uncertainties can be represented by sampling statistics, but Number two, incomplete knowledge. This type of uncertainty can be very large, and in fact, it can dominate the overall uncertainty. And so what we are going to talk about is uh, how we can handle each one of these different kinds of uncertainty in the context of modeling. I'm going to now talk about some common and useful probability distributions that are commonly used by people doing uncertainty analysis. The first one is uh, something called a uniform distribution, and its use is appropriate when we are able and willing to identify a range of possible values for some variable, but unable to decide which values within this range are more likely to occur than others. And as we can see here in this figure, we think that the value of a particular variable lies between values A and B, but we don't know which values are more likely. So we have a flat probability distribution. All values between A and B are equally likely. And as you can imagine, this is not a distribution that occurs in nature, but it can certainly describe our subjective state of knowledge about a particular variable. The next distribution we'll look at, and we have discussed this in the past, is the normal distribution. And this is something that does occur in nature. And uh, many natural quantities are distributed in a normal distribution or uh, in a log normal fashion. So these are distributions that arise in a variety of applications. And quantities formed by adding many uncertain quantities tend to be normally distributed. And the uh, probability density function, or PDF, takes on values over the entire range of real numbers. And uh, the evaluation of the cumulative distribution function can be done using statistical tables, or now you can do it in Excel spreadsheets. 
and uh, the parameters of the distribution are related to the first and second moments of the distribution. So here, uh, visually, we can see that values near the peak of this distribution are considered more likely, and there is, in fact, the peak that is the most likely value of this distribution. And as you move farther away from the peak in both directions towards the tails, uh, those values are less likely. Yet another commonly used distribution is the triangular distribution, which describes a situation where we know the minimum, maximum, and the most likely value. And we can construct a triangle based on just these pieces of information. So for example, we might describe the gallons of a particular chemical used per week in a workplace. And we might know from past records that the minimum number of gallons used is 3,000 and a maximum is 7,000. Uh, but most weeks show a usage of 5,000 gallons. And we can use these three data points to construct a triangular distribution.